Weakness. Do I have weakness? I am nothing but weakness. I'm not naturally strong or fast or flexible. I'm certainly not the smartest person in the world. I get emotional over stupid things. I eat the wrong foods. I don't sleep enough. I procrastinate and I waste time. I care too much about meaningless things and not enough about important things. My ego is too big. My mind is too small, often trapped inside itself. Now, all that being said, I have a say. A person's strength is often their biggest weakness. But their weaknesses can become strengths. Success, guys, a very, very lonely road, man. Along that road, you're not going to see too many friends. You see your shadow most often. You got trust in the heart of hearts. Inside what you're doing, what you believe in, is a worthy cause, a winnable fight. I wish I could tell you you're tired, go take a break. I wish I could tell you tired, rest for a year. I wish I could tell you that, that it's going to get easier. I wish I could tell you it's going to get easier. I wish I could tell you that if you just keep going, it's going to get lighter. I dare you to take a stand today to say no more. I will no longer accept this for my life. I dare you to take action today. I dare you to write your goals down and get someone to hold you accountable. I dare you to hold yourself accountable. I dare you. I dare you to give up everything that is keeping you from your dream. To say no to all the negative influences. I dare you to pick up a book instead of a drink. I dare you to work harder than you think you did yesterday. I dare you to prove them wrong. I dare you to prove yourself right. I dare you to stand up as a man or as a strong woman, as whoever you are, and declare that you are going to claim a bigger and better life for yourself. When you get to the point where enough is enough, when you get to the point where it hurt real bad, when you get to the point when it's over, when they're tired, when they're frustrated, when they're ready to give up, when they spent their last dime, that's when they get started. But what you cannot do is you cannot quit doing the process. You cannot give up because it ain't what you see. You cannot give up. Pain is there to make you better. Without struggle, there can be no victory. And let me tell you, when you've been through pain, when you've fought for where you are, you ain't gonna let anyone take away what you've got. When you've earned it and paid your dues and suffered and failed, been hurt and been down, and you get back up, when pain and struggle comes to face you again, you look it in the face and stand it down. Because you've been through too much. You're too strong now. Everything that has happened to you up until this point has made you who you are. And it will continue to mold you into who you will be. How do you overcome the suffering of life? Be a better person. That's how you do it. Well, that's hard. It takes responsibility. And I think, you know, you said to someone, you want to have a meaningful life? Everything you do matters. That's the definition of a meaningful life. But everything you do matters. You're gonna have to carry that with you. Or do you wanna just forget about the whole meaning thing and then you don't have any responsibility because who the hell cares? And you can wander through life doing whatever you want, gratifying impulsive desires for how useful that's going to be. And you're stuck in meaninglessness, but you don't have any responsibility. Which one do you want? Well, ask yourself, which one are you pursuing? And you'll find very rapidly that it isn't the majority of your soul that's pursuing the whole meaning thing. Because, well, look what you have to do to do that. You have to take on the fact that life is suffering. You have to put yourself together in the face of that. It starts with yourself, man. You gotta start diving into those things that you're afraid of. You don't gain confidence by going to the spot that makes you feel good. It's gonna be a false reality. And the second life gives you that challenge, all you want to do is go back to what made you confidence or, 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 or what gave you confidence is that happy spot. Now, what gives you confidence, what gave me confidence, was spending years at a kitchen table trying to learn how to read and write all my own. Realizing I can't learn the way you learn. I can't. But I can learn. 
But getting confidence, not being afraid, is overcoming the fear. I used to stutter severely bad. So right now, I don't know how many people are going to watch this. You know what gives me confidence? Is knowing I no longer care if I sit and start stuttering anymore. That's what gives me confidence, is facing these things, overcoming them. And maybe not overcoming them every day, but facing them. And facing them, facing them. Pretty soon, like this, you know what, man, this is where it's at. It's not in that comfort zone. It's in the discomfort zone is where my confidence is getting built. That's where it's getting built. But people want to, they, they want an easier answer. It has to be an easier way. It's not. I'm sorry. I searched for it my entire life. <laughs> I did. Lies, I lied. Lies. I did everything. And I still felt empty. I walk around with a backpack with all my stuff in it. With no car. And I walk around happiest person in the world. Have nothing. Happy as hell. It's because I found out the whole key to life. It's not in all that. Have to face yourself. So many people live to be 100 years old and they die miserable, having everything because they never examined. I call it my live autopsy. You never examine this. Happiness, peace, enlightenment, it's all up here, man. It's all up here. And when I start talking like this, people are man, you know, I don't know. It's the truth, man. It's all up here. You just gotta want to go and face it. And that's the hard part. Attitude is a reflection, a result of a person's will. It is incalculably powerful. It can bring about marvelous results for us, but we need to train it patiently, day by day. Now let's talk about the attitudes of people who are successful. The top 5% of the people who go sailing through life from one success to another and who even when they fail at something, shrug it off and head right out again. No matter who the person is or what he does, men and women in sales, business executives, people in all the professions, wives and mothers, students, top people in the armed forces, public servants, men and women in the service of religion, working men and women in all fields of endeavor. Wherever you find a person doing an outstanding job and getting outstanding results, you will find a person with the right kind of attitude. These people take the attitude toward themselves that they can accomplish what they set out to accomplish, that there's no good reason on earth why they can't be competent, successful. They have a healthy attitude toward themselves and, as a result, toward life and the things they want to accomplish. And because of this, they achieve some remarkable things. And they come to be called successful, outstanding, brilliant, lucky, and a lot of other things. They're quite frequently no more brilliant or outstanding than the majority of the people by whom they're surrounded. But they did develop the right attitude. And they found their accomplishments not too difficult. And many times, surprisingly easy, simply because it seems that so few are really trying, really believe in themselves. Successful people come in all shapes and sizes and in widely varying degrees of intelligence, background, and so on. But they all have one thing in common. They expect more good out of life than bad. They expect to succeed more than they fail. If you want something worthwhile, take the attitude that there are a lot more reasons why you can have it than there are that you cannot, and set out to earn it. Go after it, work at it, ask for it, and nine times out of ten, you'll get it. Our environment is really a mirror of our mental attitude. If we don't like our environment, we have to change our attitude first. Your ability and willingness to discipline yourself to accept personal responsibility for your life are essential to happiness, health, success, achievement, and personal leadership. Accepting responsibility is one of the hardest of all disciplines, but without it, no success is possible. The failure to accept responsibility and the attempt to foist responsibility for things in your life that make you unhappy onto other people, institutions and situations completely distort cause and effect, undermine your character, weaken your resolve and diminish your humanity. They lead to making endless excuses. There is a direct relationship between the acceptance of responsibility and the amount of personal control you feel you have over your life. This means that the more you accept responsibility, the greater sense of control you experience. There is also a direct relationship between the amount of control you feel you have and how positive you feel. The more you feel that you have a high sense of control in the important areas of your life, the more positive and happy you are in everything you do. 
When you accept responsibility, you feel strong, powerful, and purposeful. Accepting responsibility eliminates the negative emotions that rob you of happiness and contentment.